I'm Keith Warren. I'm a hunter, <laughs> a fisherman. I'm throwing a big old bait because I'm looking for a big old fish. A conservationist. Oh, come on. A family man. And I'm proud to be a deer farmer. I'm taking a road trip and we're going behind the scenes of today's most innovative deer farmers and wildlife management operations in North America. This is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Here's Keith Warren. I thought you were a deer farmer. Full-time deer farmer and part-time cattle farmer. We gotta load these up. If you want to, you meet me at the deer barn and then uh, I'll be down there in just a minute. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't want any part of that. I'll meet you at the barn. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to bring a fishing pole for try my luck over there. All right, he had to have set these here for me. He's coming up the driveway now. This, look at this buck right here. That buck, he's got to be a two-year-old. I bet you that Shaq, I was here two years ago. And Shaq would be three right now. Hey, Kevin. Is hey, this Keith. Shaq right here? Yeah, that's him last year, too. Goodness gracious. Okay. I know that we videotaped this buck two years ago when he was a yearling and he was unbelievable and exceptional deer. So it doesn't surprise me that he's grown to something like this, but you gotta tell me who this bad boy is right here. That's Chamberlain. He's also a three year old. Both Shaq and Chamberlain are Max Bow Dream sons. This was him at two last year, scores 262, and he's doing really well this year. He's actually doing so well he can't hardly hold his head up. Oh, all right. Well, we're gonna go see Shaq and Chamberlain and the other boys right now. All right, so is this, ooh, those are the big boys, aren't they? That, that's the group of breeders right there. My goodness, okay, so which one is Shaq? He's the one right down there between the two trees there that uh, has got kind of a little bit of damage going on there on the right side, big, heavy, pretty wide. Got you, got Tall. you. Looking back at the video of him when he was one year old, it was clear that he was gonna be an outstanding deer. Because at one, he was a beast, and at two, we just showed you the antlers, he was a beast, and look at him now. All right, now, what's that What's that other great, big, typical deer? I mean, there's real typical in there? He's, uh, his name's Max Jack. He's actually a Max out of Maximus Fleece Lucky doe on the bottom. Pretty proud of him. We've been using him to back up with for the last two years. That is a gorgeous typical buck. And how old is he? He's four this year. Okay, wow, check that out. Now, okay, who is a guy with a cockeyed head? I look over there and I'm thinking, you talk about somebody that's grown some bone, who's that? That is Chamberlain. He's a little bit heavier on his right side than he is his left. He can't hardly hold his head up. He's uh, out of balance, walking around with a crooked neck all the time. Oh my gosh, and that's the one we just showed you, the, the rack inside the barn. And that was his second year set, right? Right, he scored 262 last year at two, and he's a lot bigger than that this year. He's gonna be over 300. Okay, now are you gonna leave the antlers on him or are you gonna cut them off? I was gonna try to leave them on him this year, but the way he's trying to struggle holding his head up, I'll probably cut him off to get him balanced back up. Gotcha, how big do you think body weight these bucks are? Uh, 250, 300 pounds. That'll just give you an idea of how big the antlers are because uh, northern deer like this, and I call these northern deer because you've got a lot of northern blood in your deer. When you walk up to them on the ground, these deer, I mean, there's no ground shrinkage. They get bigger. So, I mean, just checking those guys out, that's amazing. I really like that typical buck. Really like him. Well, he's looking straight at us, isn't he? Yeah, he's always alert and proud. Those are some just awesome, awesome deer. So if somebody wants to buy some offspring out of them or some semen out of them, give me your phone number. 405-823-3572. Kim Wallace will take care of you. I've been dealing with him for years and he will take care of you. This is beautiful. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by 
the North American Deer Farmers Association, DNA Solutions and the North American Deer Registry, New Dart, and Sage Capital Bank. This program is dedicated to the men and women of the United States Armed Forces, past, present, and future. All right, somebody needs to tell me what to do. It's almost time to bottle. Okay. I have to carry the bottles. I'm still trying to figure out how to make it work. You'll catch on. But you know what? You, I, you, I'll figure it out someday. Are you pretty optimistic about that? Here you go. Thank you. All right. Lead the way, baby. Okay. Where do you want me to put them? Where are the deer? We gotta go get them outside. Well, let's go get them. All right. Boy, see, I didn't get to come in here last time, Kevin. These are the last five you've got? These are the last five that are getting bottle fed twice a day. Okay. The other group over here is getting bottle fed every morning once a day, along with this group here. And what we're doing with this last group here, we'll bring them in feed them in the barn, they will spend the night in the barn, and once they're weaned down to once a day, we leave them out 24 hours a day. But right now they spend the night in the barn because they're just a little bit small. I think growing up on a farm is a pretty cool deal, and growing up on a deer farm is a really cool deal. Two of these girls are Kevin's. But now look at this, they're, they're all over it. They're gonna be doing some bottle feeding here pretty quick, and uh, they're taking ownership. As Wallahatchee Whitetails has grown, so has my daughters, and of course their friends help also but uh, they take responsibility and pride in what they're doing. They care for the fawns every day. Ashlyn and Haley have taken on the role and one of these days this will be theirs anyway, so they're learning how to make it work. Learn how to make it work and they're learning good values at the same time. And the best thing about it is they're outside and how can kids be bad if they're outside? So how does it make you feel to see the girls growing up and helping out on the farm? Uh, it gives me a lot of pride and I enjoy seeing them you know, raised out here with down to earth values and they take on the responsibility of taking care of the animals and teaches them what they need to survive in the world. I think it's pretty awesome watching them do that. Yeah, it's definitely uh, exciting. They enjoy doing it. And uh, by the end of the summer, it's a job, but they uh, still come out and take care of it. Well, and also it's plenty hot. They could be doing a lot of other things that are a little bit more comfortable than working in a, in a, in a hot barn, but they're liking it, you can tell. Uh, yeah, they, they love the fawns. And again, if you're interested, if you're in Oklahoma or, and you're interested in deer farming and want to become a deer farmer, got a little piece of property, maybe it's a marginal piece of property, you couldn't use it for anything else, you can probably use it for white-tailed deer. Call Kevin, because he can, he can help you set you up. I can promise you that. I truly believe that one of the best ways to create a better country is to make better Americans. And one way to make better Americans is to make better children. And how do you make better children? Well, nature, folks. Children love nature. They love every single thing about it. They're drawn to it, their DNA. The problem is we live in a society that kids just don't get out much. I mean, they have too many opportunities indoors that just limits their time to spend outdoors. And so as an adult, as a parent, as an American, I think we all want to leave our country in better shape than it was when it was given to us. And so the best thing I can do is suggest you to take kids outside, get them outside to enjoy nature, because by doing so, It'll make sure that we have a better country tomorrow. For more information on the American Deer and Wildlife Alliance, please join us online at DeerWildlifeAlliance.org. If somebody was to contact you, Kevin, and want to come out here and talk about the possibility of getting in the deer farming business and doing business with you or buying some of your deer and looking at what you have, what's the best time of day? About right now, hour or two before dark? Yeah, definitely in the summertime when it's cool. Uh, or if early morning's always good, right after we feed, the bucks always come up and look around. They can give me a call anytime. Like I said, on my mobile number is the best way to get a hold of me. And I'm always welcome farm tours. And anybody interested or just wanting to see what we got going or more than welcome to come out. So how many deer do you have now? About 130. Here comes the one-year-olds. They can go back and forth between these two pens. Um, the majority of these we're gonna hold over and uh, let them grow out for next year. There's a couple we will use for backup bucks. Are all these deer DNA'd? 
The majority of them are. I used to DNA every single one of my deer. Now on the bucks, I don't DNA them all unless it's really a pedigree that I'm proud of or it's one that I'm gonna breed with. Same way on the does. I DNA most of the doe fawns, but by the time I get an offspring out of them, they're all DNA. How important do you think it is to have DNA on a deer that you're buying if you're planning on becoming a, a deer breeder? I mean, seriously, going for that breeder market versus the pasture deer market. I won't buy a deer unless it's DNA for my breeder stock. I'm with you. Here's something that is different since the last time I was here. You've got this misting system, so. All right, tell me about that. We actually have two misting systems. We've got one up here on the north end and one on the south. There's over 1,100 spray nozzles on both systems. Each system has over 500. It runs around the top perimeter of each one of the pins, every fence I've got here. And it's got a digital programmer. You can set it to go off as many times as a day or however long you want for each spraying. And pretty good system. It runs about 200 PSI. Nice, let's see it on. Oh, that's pretty slick right there. Bye-bye bugs. And it's all about the health of the animal. Yeah, we try to make them as comfortable as we can and keep all the insects off of them. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by the North American Deer Farmers Association, DNA Solutions and the North American Deer Registry, New Dart, and Sage Capital Bank. At Wallahatchie Whitetails, our breeding program is designed for one side of the business for the breeders. Any of our bucks that we have not sold as a breeder to other breeders in the state or out of state, at the age of three, we actually take and move them to the Wilderness Refuge, which is a preserve Bob Moore and I own together. At that point, they're turned loose. They become free ranging inside our high fence preserve. A lot of people are a little bit apprehensive about hunting high fence and what really happens out in the high fence. I think the biggest problem that they have is they truly do not know what's going on. Where out in the wild, your hunting population or per capita of hunters per acre is much higher. On the preserve, we control exactly how many people are hunting here. We know where everybody's at at all times. The deer are three years old before they ever get moved into here. Most of the hunters out in the wild are harvesting one or two year old bucks that have not lived their life. Most of them haven't become mature enough to breed other does. And so once we take an animal out of the breeding operation at the age of three, turn them loose into the refuge, we've had this refuge open now for a third year. There's bucks that are here from day one that we haven't harvested. We've got animals six years old and they're gonna be older again this year, so. I was the first guy, wasn't I, that ever hunted? You were the very first customer at the Wilderness Refuge. Okay. I did, I, I did pull the trigger. I went up, I pulled the trigger and got scoped, but I missed the deer. But I had a heck of a good time and I'll be back here hunting, but that just goes to show you, I mean, the, the deer have got great habitat, they're great animals, and it's all about having a great time. And, and so, okay, you, you're doing what's right for the deer. And I think when you do what's right for the deer, everybody wins. So you've got 130 deer, more or less, total without fawns this year, right? Right. Okay. And uh, we've got 50 plus fawns right now, which we're done fawning, but that's the numbers we've got. Who are these guys? This pin right here is the three-year-olds. These guys here will end up being sold to the refuge and moved out in September. Wow. And just think about it. These deer, they're gonna get put on the refuge and they've got the best habitat the best nutrition, the best predator program to keep them alive of any deer. I think these are the luckiest deer out there. They've got Mother Nature's playground to go and live the rest of the life on. They've got plenty of feed, water, habitat, and lots of does out there. And think about it, what deer out in the uh, open range, fair chase world have an opportunity, really, how many deer have an opportunity to live a life as good as that with food, water, habitat, ability to be exposed to does, and I mean, it's, that, that's what it's all about. I mean, doing what's right for the deer. These bucks here, they've been protected for the first three years of their lives right now. None of them been in a car accident or hunter kill or anything of that nature. So they're way ahead of most deer already. If you don't know who to contact to get in deer farming business, you're in Oklahoma. If you were to contact Kevin, he can help you out. And so nobody wants to see somebody make a mistake. 
No, I mean, and mistakes are, are very costly, and a lot of times they'll deter somebody from actually making good progress. And I mean, one thing about deer industry and raising white-tailed deer, taking a piece of property has been a good stir. Whenever you can take an animal, such as a, a white-tailed deer, grow him, produce the best antlers that he can, and a piece of property and improve it and leave it better than it was before you come in contact with it, I mean, it's a good deal. You know, it's a win-win. Yeah, it's good for everybody. All right, so there's a guy right now sitting at home and Edmond or Enid or Tulsa, whatever, and he's saying, you know what? That deer farming may be for me, okay? Would you help somebody get in the deer farming business? Oh, definitely. All they need to do is call me and I'll help them uh, get with the right people at the ag department and uh, get their fence and everything approved and set up and start raising deer. And of course, you've got deer to sell. And uh, and I mean, if uh, so if somebody wants more information about buying deer from you or learning about deer farming right here in Oklahoma, give them a telephone number. You can call me at 405-823-3572. That's a big buck, especially for a two-year-old rack. Wallahatchee Whitetails, his name is Shaq. Get on my Facebook page and the guy who gets, or girl gets closest to the score of Shaq, we're gonna send you a pretty cool prize. So what are you doing this morning? I'm gonna feed these babies. Okay, you need some milk? Well, after I mix up all this milk, So how many babies you got to feed this morning? I think 21. I'll say if you have to think about it like that, quite a few. Yeah, I don't ever keep count. I just feed them. It can get violent. These, they, these sweet little angels can turn into mean little demons when they're hungry. <laughs> yeah, they get fired up, don't they? Yeah, they do. And it's amazing how fast they can suck down a bottle. Yeah, they're pretty honorary. So you didn't have any experience with deer before coming over here? No, not really. I visited a deer farm, that was about it. Okay, and but you come from the, the horse industry, right? Yes. Well, I grew up on a farm all my life. Okay. Cows, pigs, you name it, we've had it. Okay, so turning over to deer farming, how do you feel about that? I like them. How is it compared to though, the cattle and pigs and all that hat, I mean, as Honestly, far as... Honestly? Yeah. Our goats with fancy antlers. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. That, you know what? I've never heard it said that way, but it's true. <laughs> it a is. lot of people that, that raise goats, they could do really good raising they deer, could. couldn't they? They could. I mean, it's it's same thing almost. It's amazing. I mean, if you, if you can do a goat, you can do a deer. And it's really not that hard to do a deer. Now, you know, how long did it take you once you got over here to get in the swing of things for, I mean, a day, two? I mean, the biggest thing is organization, right? Yeah, it was easy to change over. So have you wound up meeting a bunch of deer farmers? I've met a few, yeah, I have. They all seem really nice. You know, on our program, I always encourage people that don't know what's going on deer farm to take a farm visit, come out and take a look, and I think they'd be surprised with what goes on, and, and more importantly, I think they'd be surprised at the people in the deer industry, because the people or what makes the industry to me so special. Baby deer, you have one over here, don't you? Yeah, I've got, that one is, uh, what's today, 21st? That one's 21 days old. She's 21 born, day old baby. born August 1st. Oh, look at you, look at you. 21 days old, and you know, these fawns can seem really, really gentle, but when all of a sudden we, we let them outside and then when you introduce them to the, to the native habitat and all, they become a deer in a hurry, don't they? Oh, the, it's amazing how fast they, they turn wild. Look at them. Ooh, Come a stranger's on, in town. Come mm -hmm. on. Hey, go to your room. Come on. Come on. Let's all go to our room. Come on. When you're working with white-tailed deer, white-tailed deer are just naturally kind of flighty animals, but the way you condition them is they're bottle raising hey, these doe fawns, and she Come winds on. up getting out there, and she walks among them, and where they're, they're just not as flighty. Uh, once these deer get let go, and out in these pens, they do kind of get, you know, they get more deer acting, but like right now, they're kind of like goats. So she's up there rounding them up, she's gonna bring them in, and she's gonna feed them. We all hungry? Ours aren't any tamer than those out there in the wild. We don't tame our bucks. See, that's it, we don't tame No, we only tame our does, and there's a good reason for that. It's rare, I mean, I have three baby bucks in the 
in the nursery, there's reasons for it. Either the mama died, they got injured, or they got sick as a baby, and they brought them for me to take care of them. That's the only reason we have baby bucks. So two years ago, somebody said you'd have been doing this, would you have believed them? No. No, I wouldn't have. So what advice would you give a want-to-be deer farmer if you just had a little piece of inside information? I look at this like cows and horses. Buy the best you can, your money will buy. It's, it costs the same to feed a mediocre animal as it does a good animal. I'd look at pedigrees and I'd buy the best my money would buy, even if it's less. That piece of advice right there, buying the best you can afford to buy, is a great piece of advice. It's something that, well, I hear it every place I go. So if you're a wannabe deer farmer, uh, quality over quantity is the way that, that I see doing it. Guys like Kevin Wallace are in business to raise these deer up and to put them out on a preserve and, and spend years and years of their life out there growing bigger and healthier. And uh, the whole deal is, is you want quality animals to put out there. Like Carolyn said, it costs the same to feed a quality animal as a mediocre animal, so why not feed a quality animal? It's always nice coming here, Kevin. I love seeing the your deer, obviously, and your family, and I mean, just seeing the girls grow up here on the farm, and I look at these, and I, I'm looking at the deer, and I'm thinking, they were huge last time I was here, and they're even bigger this time, and I'm just amazed. And, and if y'all are interested in, in getting in the deer farming industry, there's the daddy. He will help you get started. Give him your telephone number. Area code 405-823-3572. Hold on to that. I hope to be able to come back here soon and uh, keep it up. Those girls are getting pretty like their mama. Thanks. Good to see you again, <laughs> Keith. All righty. Before you make your next Polaris purchase, you owe it to yourself to check out the number one Polaris dealer, Hoffpower Polaris. Log on to KeithWarren.net for 24-7 access to more information, more video, and full episodes. Reproductive services for deer and wildlife store is provided by Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics.